And they, and they found this little island. They had no idea where they were even at at this time as they were getting ready to go into the, to Malta. And they were getting to this little island. But all hope had been lost of the sailors. Now these are professional sailors. This is not somebody who just jumped on a sailboat one day and said, hey, I think I'll try my hand at, at being a sailor. These were professional sailors. These were people who earned their living by sailing ships and working the crews of a ship. So you know they had been in storms before. You know that they had been through hard times before. But this storm was so bad. This storm was so terrible that they had not seen the sun for so many days and so many nights. Uh, I mean, they had stopped eating. They had started fasting. I mean, they were just crying out to whoever would listen, whatever God would answer. They were crying out. And Paul begins to speak to them, the very one they would not listen to when he told them, let's don't go on this trip because I, I perceive that it's going to be with much loss and disaster. They wouldn't listen to the preacher then, but when all hope was lost, the preacher stood up. Praise God for some Holy Ghost preachers in our land today that are still standing up for the gospel, still standing up for Jesus Christ. Paul stands up and he tells the people that all hope is not lost. You know, we've hit a storm in our lives here. We've hit, we've hit a very dark storm in our life in the past two months called the coronavirus. This coronavirus storm has not only swept our country, but it has swept through our state, it has swept through our counties, it has swept through the whole world. And in the whole world today, it is suffering this coronavirus that seems to have no mercy and bringing sickness to over 700 thousand confirmed people. I, I assure you there's some folks out there that's not been confirmed that <coughs> as well. Over 37,000 people have died that's been confirmed from uh, this coronavirus. Our, our news media is spreading fear so much that suicide rates are up. Just this past week I, I received two phone calls from two different families of people that are connected, they're not in our church, but are connected to our church in some way, of people committing suicide. The suicide hotlines have increased by 300%. I even, I even saw an interview with Dr. Phil was on, was on TV, he's on Fox News, and he's saying this is not good. People are being locked down in their homes. He said this thing is, is going to cause more trouble, us being locked down mentally, than it is from the coronavirus. And he was warning the nation of uh, the mental impact of being locked down and dealing with the, the lockdowns that we're in today. But I'm going to tell you something, church. There's still hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is still hope in the salvation story of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And I got news for you. My Jesus not only died on that cross, but before He went to the cross, He was whipped with 39 stripes, and by His stripes, healing still flows to the people of the, of the world today. Healing can still heal you from the coronavirus, the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. This is the gospel message that the devil does not want to be preached. That's why he's doing his best to shut down things. And I'm hearing all kinds of reports of people, internet's getting shut down, and Facebooks are deleting their messages, and, and, and all this stuff is going on, and censorship is being taken place, because the devil don't want the world to know that the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away this coronavirus. Amen. But I'm telling you, church, it can wash it away. I've seen people healed of cancer. I've seen people healed of COPD. I've seen people healed of so many different things. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. I've seen people healed of so many chronic diseases. And yet, and I've even received healing myself. And my wife has received healing herself. We've had healing in her own family. I know that Jesus heals. I've seen Jesus heal. And I know that Jesus heals this coronavirus disease Amen. as well this morning. But now America has moved from fear. You see, we're moving from fear into something else now. Because the media has spread fear so much and people have been locked down for so long that now we're moving from fear to anger. America is moving to anger. The world is moving to anger so much that this past week in Capitol buildings all around our country today, people are protesting by the thousands 
calling for the extreme measures. I mean, it's, it's not just people saying you need to stay home and safeguard yourself, but extreme measures have been put on some people in some remote places that don't even have coronavirus cases at all, and there are extreme measures as well. People are protesting because people are now getting desperate. People are now getting angry about the situation. Pastors and churchgoers, just this past Easter, just last week, last Sunday, were being fined for sitting in their cars in the church parking lot. Now, there were some that had, had social distancing going on inside the sanctuaries, and, and they were practicing the social distancing inside the sanctuaries, and they were being fined too. But it's gone past as being in the sanctuaries. Now they're finding people who are sitting in their automobiles, even with their windows rolled up. And they're being fined too. And, and pastors and churches are being fined. There is something satanic happening in our country today. The government has had so many businesses and churches seeking loans this past week in a stimulus package that they've given out that the government has ran out of money. The government's run out of money. Think about that. All these loans that these businesses have applied for as they're trying to stay afloat, as they're trying to keep their head above the water because their businesses have been shut down. They've had to send their employees home. Everybody's in this quarantine. And now the government comes out and says, we're going to do a good thing here. We're going to give you some loans. But now those loans are running out. They're running out. I know, I know pastors and, and big churches right now that are suffering because they're not able to keep their bills going because of this, this coronavirus that's happening in our country today. We, our unemployment rate right now is as high as it was during the Great Depression. Thousands upon thousands of people are going without jobs. And I'm going to news for you, when, we, when the country does start back up, now, not everybody's going to go back to the same paycheck that they had before. A good friend of mine received a phone call just this past uh, week, it was, I think it was this week or last week, that his company's going to keep them on, but they slashed their salary by 30%. So, all across this country, when America does wake back up and go back to work, not everybody's going to make the same money that they made before. Not everybody's going to be able to go back to the job that they had before because there's going to be some businesses that don't survive. And so we've got people right now going to food banks, lining up at food banks all across this country, and they're lining up in record numbers. And the food banks are running out of food before they can satisfy everybody's need. Just like the day on the ship when the sailors had lost hope. The church needs to stand up and tell people with the same words of the Apostle Paul, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. The God I serve, He will not forsake us, nor will He leave us. Amen. The church has hope in tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. You need to have faith and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what comes my way today, no matter what storm rises against me tomorrow, my hope is not in the government program. My hope is not in government loans and bailouts. My hope is not in the people of America. My hope is not in the church people. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, if, the, if the God can send a raven to the king's table and pick up meat and fly it to the prophet and feed the prophet, my God take care of his people. I want to tell you, there might have been darkness in the land of Goshen, but remember there was light. Oh, there was darkness in the land of Egypt, but there was light in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were. The children of uh, the people of Egypt were suffering, but the children of God did not suffer and did no, and, and had no sickness, disease among them when they came out of Egypt. Remember what God has done in the past. He can still do in the present, and he will do in the future because God changes now. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I serve the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of creation. And if my Father God had created the whole planet, and He created the whole universe, and He created you and me, then God knows how to take care of me. God knows how to take care of you. God knows how to heal us. God knows how to protect us. Amen. He protected 
protect the children of Israel by telling them to apply the blood upon their doorposts. And when the death angel went through the land, he would pass by their house. And we celebrate Passover just last week, celebrating what happened in the book of Exodus. I'm going to tell you something. The blood of Jesus Christ can still protect your home, can still protect your house from that death angel. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon your doorpost this morning, church. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, well, preacher, how can I do that? It's called pleading the blood. I plead the blood. I claim the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what pleading the blood means. I claim the blood of Jesus Christ. It means I put my confidence. I put my hope. I put my trust. I put my faith in the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I claim the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ to wash my house. I claim the blood of Jesus Christ to protect my family. I claim the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ to for protection power. Listen, when Satan went before God and they were talking about the servant Job, Satan himself said, I cannot touch him because you have put a hedge around him. When we plead the blood of Jesus, we're asking the Lord to put a blood hedge of protection around us, around our homes, and around around our families. And that's what I'm telling you this morning. If God can do it for Job, He can do it for you. He don't love Job more than He loves you or more than He loves I. He is not a respecter of persons this morning. So God will protect Job. He'll protect you. But remember, when Job went through all that he went through, he said, well, Brother Cliff, he went through a lot of terrible things. He lost everything he had. Look at the end of his life. He gained three times as much as he ever had before. I want to tell you something, church. Hold on to God. Hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Put all your faith and your hope in Jesus today. There's still power in the name of Jesus to conquer this disease. There's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ to wash this disease away. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 this morning says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You say, brother, why is all this coming upon us? Because we have forsaken God. We have stopped seeking Him in our churches. We have stopped seeking Him in our homes. And we have stopped seeking Him in our countries. We took the, come on, we took the Ten Commandments off the courthouse, of the table, to the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse, and then we made laws that going against the Ten Commandments. We took prayer out of our schools, and we put metal detectors in its place. Come on, somebody. There used to be a time when you would teach your children abstinence, and now we give them condoms when they walk through the doors of the schoolhouse. Listen, we need to get back to God. We need to repent as a country, as a nation, as a church, as a people of a America and people of the world, we need to repent and call our sins out before God and ask God to forgive us and heal our lands. Amen. But this is a time that God is simply trying to get our attention. And I hope He's got your attention because He's got mine. I hope He's got your attention because you need to seek Him while He can still be found. Matthew 28, chapter verse 20 says, Lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Can I give you some hope this morning? This is not the end of the world. This is just a little bump on your life. That's all this is. This is not the end of the world. But I'm going to tell you something. If you can't live for Jesus today, how in the world do you think you're going to live for Him during the tribulation years? How do you think you're going to survive when all hell has truly been released? You know, we're moaning and complaining and crying about our government uh, extending their the oversight of their powers, going beyond what they're legally able to do against our Constitution and against us. And it has enraged us. It's enraged me as well. But I want to tell you something. That is, we are suffering nothing at this point in time. You think our government is outreached now. And you think our government is, is going beyond what they're legally supposed to do to us, you wait to the great tribulation. There won't be no constitution. There won't be no bill of rights. You Amen. won't have rights as a citizens of America anymore because it's going to be one world government <coughs> take place at that time. And an evil dictator called the Antichrist is going to rule this world. There will be a great tribulation to come. And what you and I are going to do today is nothing but a shadow of what is yet to come upon this planet. But I got good news for you. My Bible tells me, oh, that God is not, that God's not going to wait around and let us suffer. But in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the trumpet blow, the dead of Christ are going to rise and the church is going to get raptured up. I don't plan on going to the tribulation. I plan on being resurrected, hallelujah, out of this old earth and being raptured with the 
the church and live forever in paradise with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you this morning to seek you the Lord while He may be found before the rapture of the church. And I assure you, if you can't live for Jesus today, if you can't serve Him today, if you can't go to church today, you will not serve Him during the tribulation years. Jesus tells us that He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. Even until the end of the world. This aerocyclone storm that we call the coronavirus, it will come to an end, church. The sun always shines after the storm is gone. The truth is, though, you know, we always say that the sun always shines after the storm, but the truth really is the sun's always shining. You see, the clouds of the storm hide the sun from our sight, and we can't see the sun but the sun is still there shining. The sun doesn't go out. There's no light switch that God uh, flips and, and just makes the sun go dark. It doesn't go out. It still shines. Even under a rain cloud, the sun is still shining. The problem is that you and I can't see through the storm. We can't see through the clouds to see the sun that is still shining in the sky today. Just like right here in the south this morning, we woke up to a thunderstorm. We woke up to rain. And right now, it is dark outside. If you look out your window in Georgia, you will see that the sun is not shining. But I assure you, there's another place on, in America today. There's another state. And they woke up to beautiful sunshine. You see, they're not getting the storm that you and I are getting, but the sun is still shining. And I want to tell you, the sun's always shining above the storm. And just like the sun of Jesus Christ is always shining above the storms of our life, the sun of Jesus Christ is always shining with His glory and with His power. And He is shining above this coronavirus. You see, church, it's time for us to stop complaining. It's time for us to stop being depressed and rise up like the eagles and and fly above this storm and God will give us the victory as we look and seek His face this morning. Don't lose hope, church. Don't lose hope because this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And I, and I know some of you are just sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it too. But this too shall pass. And then you and I will live in what is called the post-corona world. Our life will be a little different but it will get back to the sun shining in the sky again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only should we have hope and faith in Jesus Christ this morning to save our souls, but we need to look at what has happened to Paul on the island of Malta. Go back and look at what Paul, what happened to him in chapter 28. A snake came out of the fire and bit Paul. It must have been a poisonous snake because the, the island natives were watching him to see him die. So we know it was some little garden snake. It was a poisonous snake. But Paul must have heard the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. You got your Bible sitting in your lap this morning. I encourage you to turn to Mark chapter 16 and verse 17 because this is the forgotten chapter. These are the forgotten scriptures that preachers refuse to preach anymore. These are the for forgotten scriptures that the preachers are too afraid to preach anymore because they don't have faith in the scriptures. They don't have faith in the Word of God to preach these scriptures anymore. But I want you to see this morning because I believe that what my God said 2,000 years ago it's still true today. My God never changes. He'll never forsake me. And His words have resurrection power this morning. Mark chapter 16. Paul must have knew the words of Jesus, but when he shook that snake off, but look at what he says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer this morning? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new Tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Oh, no, brother, that's far fetched. I, I don't know. You may believe that. Oh, yes, I do, because I've cast devils out of people. I've seen the devils come out of people before. And I've seen people growling and rolling and rolling on the floor and vomiting and all that. I've seen it. I've seen I've cast those devils out before. I've laid hands on the sick and seen them recover before. So I know that this scripture is true. And yes, I speak in a new tongue, because with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm not ashamed to tell you 
that I speak with new tongues under the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to notice something. Paul was not seeking that snake. He didn't go out looking for that snake. He didn't go out playing with that snake. We don't tempt God. Remember what Jesus said when the devil told him to jump off that temple? He said that, he said, jump off if you be the Son of God. And the scripture says that the angels will catch you before your foot hits a stone. And Jesus looked at him and said, tempt not the Lord thy God. So we don't tempt the Lord thy God by playing with snakes. And Paul wasn't playing with that snake. He didn't even know that snake was there. But when it came out of that fire and it bit him, he shook it off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and shook it right back into that fire from where it came from from. And we know through the scriptures that he did not die. <coughs> but look on to what it says in, in Acts chapter 28. It tells us that Paul went on to the father-in-law of the chief. And that he laid hands on him and prayed for him in the name of Jesus. And he was healed. And he was healed. How could this happen? How could this happen? That all the sailors, the professional sailors were afraid and gave up hope. And when you give up hope, you're ready to die. And you, you have no, no faith in tomorrow. But here it was a preacher telling them, have hope, have faith in God. Because as it was told to me this day, I believe that God is going to take care of us. And I'm telling you, church, I believe that God is going to take care of us this morning. We still believe in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. I want to encourage you to have hope and have faith today. Amen. That's the biggest thing I want you to get from our sermon this morning. Is to hang on to hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Even Jesus himself said in Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Have faith in God. Have faith in God church. But I want to encourage you today. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That you need to ask him to save your soul right now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Just close your eyes wherever you are. Some of you, there's so many people listening to me right now uh, through this Facebook broadcast. And so many people are scattered throughout the country listening to me. Listen, I don't know who's saved and who's not saved. I don't assume because you go to church that you're saved. I never assume that. But I'll tell you, prayer of salvation is a sincere prayer of the heart. It's not about fancy words coming out of your mouth. It's not about deeds that you do. It's about a prayer, a sincere prayer of the heart. So if you're there this morning and you're listening to me and you know you're lost and undone without Jesus, you know you're a sinner and you know you're lost and undone and you need God in your life, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I, forget, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins this morning. I, I want you to come into my heart, God. I want you to take over my life. I give my heart to you, God. I give you my soul. I give you my body. I give you my mind. Lord, I give you all of my money. I give you all of my material things. I give you everything I own. I give you everything I have. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I give you everything. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins and wash me in your precious blood. And I thank you for hearing my prayer and for saving my soul right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand praise where you are this morning? Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you were sincere in your heart, the Bible tells us that God is coming to your heart and He's washed away your sins. He is washed, He is faithful and He is just. John chapter 1 verse 7 and through 9, He is faithful and He is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now we also believe in laying on the hands of the sick, just like Paul did on that island of Malta, and just like I read to you in Mark chapter 16, but we are believers, that even though you're not physically here with me, I want to stretch out my hand toward the camera this morning, and whatever part of your body is sick, whether it be your head, your stomach, your back, whatever hurts, whatever you're going through right now, I want you to have faith in God. We're going to pray for healing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you. Lord, we ask you for healing for the body of Christ. Wherever these people are, God, whatever they're going through, whatever part of their body hurts today, Father, we know that by your stripes, according to Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, and, 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 and 2 Peter 2 and 24, that by your stripes, by the beating that you took before you went to the cross, by the very blood that came out of, those, out of, out of your back, God, the very blood that came out of the very marks that that whip hit, God. We know that the blood washes away
away all sicknesses and brings healing to us. I ask you, Lord, right now, in the name above every name, in the name of Jesus, in your Hebrew name, Yeshua, I call on Yahweh Rapha, the God that heals us right now to heal your people and set your people free. If they got coronavirus, God set them free from the coronavirus. If they got the flu, God set them free from the flu, pneumonia. If they got a sinus trouble, sinus headaches, migraines, in the name of Jesus. If they've been diagnosed with cancer, in the name of Jesus, I command cancer to die. If they've been diagnosed with depression, we command depression to leave, in the name of Jesus. We claim every demand and every demonic spirit that it gets on people, God, to hold them down. We rebuke those demonic spirits right now upon everybody that's listening to me. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, we command you to leave and leave God's people alone. And Father, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory for miraculous miracles and healing taking place today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. I appreciate you tuning in with me this morning as we've done our best to, to present you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you to remember these words to have hope and faith in God. This too shall pass and the sun will shine where you can see Him again. And, and this will, it won't take long. It's going to happen, church. It's coming back together. You just got to have some hope and faith in God. And can you have some hope and faith in God that He knows what He's doing? That God's in control and there's a reason and a season for everything under the sun. God knows what He's doing. We've got to put our trust and our faith and our confidence in Him during this time that we're actually in the middle of the storm. Now I want to encourage you this morning, as you can see, nobody's here with me, so you know normally we take up our offering and our tithes and we can't do that this morning. But I want to encourage you, if you will go onto uh, our website, BowdenChurchOfGod.org, or you can Google us, uh, you can Google Bowden Church of God, let it come up right there. If you go to our website and go to the Give uh, section in our website, it'll walk you through all of mine giving. I want to encourage you to do that. But we've already got some folks that are doing that, and, they're, and, I, and I praise God for them. Uh, because during this time that we're living in, I want you to remember the church don't get stimulus packages, okay? Uh, we don't get none of that stuff. And uh, even though those government loans are out there, I'm not signed up for no government loan uh, for the IRS to get all involved in the church's business. We're not, we're not going that route either. So we're just going to trust God for faithful givers uh, this morning, people who honor God with their giving. And I want to encourage you to go online and give it to God that way, and it'll go straight into our church bank account. And Sister Sharon will get an email on what you're giving and everything. So praise God for you. Don't forget, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, uh, I believe the weather's going to be good. And I pray it's going to be good so we can be outside at 7 o'clock. We are going to have drive-in church right here in our side parking lot. Uh, we might be in the front parking lot. I, mean, I don't know. We might change it up a little bit. But we're going to have drive-in church anyways. And I want to encourage you, if you live in the West Georgia area, uh, why don't you come and, and be with us? Come and be with us in church. Listen, you need hope and you need faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So why don't you come and be with us? And even though you got to hear a good message this morning, trust me, it is not the same. It is not the same as being in person and, and being in the presence of other believers. So I encourage you this morning to come in tonight. Until then, be good to one another. Pray for one another. Call everybody on the phone. Get on the phone, call somebody and talk to them. Give them words of encouragement this morning. And God bless you. Stay safe. And I'll see you Wednesday night.